piggybacking on uh, the, the digitization of, of materials, mm -hmm. making them available in that regard. You know, recently I was involved with a photo exhibit with Stephanie Renee at the Slot Foundation. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, part of what she tried to do with that, uh, because she had an issue, she, she uh, presented uh, photographs that her uncle took, her late uncle took, uh, while he was part of the, uh, the White House's, uh, he was at the first African American White House uh, photographer. Mm -hmm. uh, so she had an exhibit of, of his photographs, but she, uh, had to restore a lot of them because they were in the basement, there was a flood and things mm -hmm. along those lines. So a, a part of the exhibition was she invited folks who had important photographs to bring them to the Sloth Foundation and have them captured. So, you know, providing opportunities for folks that do have, you, you know, somebody brought up Ave with all the boxes she says yeah. she has in the basement, <laughs> right. you know, and, and providing opportunities for folks to have access to digitize what they do have, whether it's something written down on a, a sheet of paper, whether it's an old photograph or things like that, as an archive, having some type of component in place to, uh, to provide that opportunity for folks to encourage that. You know what I mean? Because, you know, they may have a photograph and may be sitting on it and not, not realizing that this is an important photograph right. that should be part of the collection. You know, encouraging that and providing that opportunity, I think, you know, is something we should consider. As well, well what, uh, Michael, I mean, I think that's something that you can do a lot about getting the word out. Because mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of people say, oh, I have all these pictures. I remember sitting on, when I was doing the life history of Evelyn Sims, and mm -hmm. we'd sit on her couch. Mm -hmm. And she she had hundreds of photographs. One of her and Jimmy Merritt when they were like 15, 16 years old, you know. Oh, and and it's it's it was great stuff. And I'm I, at the back of my mind right now. I'm thinking I got to call her daughter and see what happened to those pictures. Mm -hmm. I hope they're not lost somewhere. Right. Or you know, yeah. Yeah. There's a program. I don't know if you've ever heard. Uh, NEH has the community history thing, where they'll give you funding to sponsor a one day digitizing okay. workshop where they encourage the community to come in with their photos recordings um, and the equipment is there and you can have it at a local historical society but it could just as easily be at this jazz archive sure. once a year mm -hmm. everybody comes in with their photos their recordings you digitize them you keep a copy for the archives you give a digital copy to the owner uh, and they also do uh, lectures and programs around it um, so the Proposed jazz archives would be a perfect mm -hmm. that would be great. Uh, host, mm -hmm. and we could do it once a year. Uh, invite everybody to. I'm, my my fear is that we would be so overwhelmed with people that we'd need an army to. Mm -hmm. manage, but that would be a good problem. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. um, instead of, in addition to having folks come to a physical place, Temple has the community history truck. Where where uh, folks come yeah, and tell okay. their stories. I don't know whether it's Aaron, equipped with scanning so. equipment, but it can easily be um, included. So you can yeah. you can take the archives to the community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jazz will be on. There you go. Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, one of the That's things pretty. I think is important what Jermaine said. Uh, you know, we were talking about jazz musicians, but you know, she injected the fact that it's bigger than that. Mm -hmm. So we need maybe, you know, from you or, uh, you know, to educate us about who these other people are so they're included in the process. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just fast. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but we could we could yeah. sponsor conversations. Oh, it would be yeah. great to convene yeah. Philadelphia poets yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. to talk about how jazz influenced their work. So you're you're bending you're bending. I like that sponsoring conversations. This is something that Jack and I can do in a small way. I mean, maybe we could we could kind of well, get Jermaine to organize a small conversation of people involved in that kind of thing that we could we could expand on how we would go about um, collecting those those stories and finding out how we could accumulate that that stuff. Any other ideas on how uh, that we could... Uh... Well, we certainly ought to partner with the new um, South Philadelphia, well, Philadelphia Free Library branch on in South Philly, which just opened a new building. Um, I've just been asked to do some stuff with young poets they're just hosting a, a, a kind of um, open mic kind of deal 
Um, but that's a space that we could certainly use to, to showcase some of these discussions. And we have Sonia Sanchez here, and you know, like most of the well-known uh, uh, poets, and Mary Baracus, Sonia Sanchez, and others, they always uh, have poems that relate to jazz. Yeah, they always talk about jazz. Right. Yeah. And there's yeah. some books that, I think there's one book that Toni Morrison wrote that talks about Odin a lot. Yeah. Well, you I know. Mean, there's a lot of activity in that regard. I mean, if you remember, Warren Ori used to do the Poe Jazz Connection right? yeah, with yeah. poets and jazz. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, you know, and there's uh, you know, plenty of poets on the scene that, that you know, uh, Lamont Dixon, Napalm, he comes from that background and what have you. But also, you know, something I wanted to bring up, I mean, every time you have a concert or attend a concert, you see a bunch of photographers there. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> There's mm -hmm. a contingent of uh, photographers that are constantly shooting, right. you know, concerts in Philadelphia. So making a connection to, you know, their work and, and their relationship to the music. I yeah, think that's where Jazz Bridge can come in because yeah. we're very close to the photographers because right. of the calendar that we do every year. They're good, good, very, that's a good point. And as well as uh, painters, you know, there, there's a... Uh, uh, yeah, visual yeah. artists in general. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of folks that that capture images of jazz musicians and are fueled and influenced by the music. Uh, the first time Bird and Diz performed in Philadelphia in 1945 at the Academy at the Academy of Music mm -hmm. in June of 45. There were still people around, including Jimmy wow. E. And Benny Goldson, who were at that concert, mm -hmm. and remember it, remember being astounded by it because it was actually a package. It wasn't only, as you probably know, it wasn't only Bill and Dizzy, it was Don Bias, and it was like four or five acts, you know, four or five short sets. And um, another example, uh, Coltrane performed at the Church of the Advocate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, this would be around November '66. I think Sunny Fortune was was on that gig, mm -hmm. or, and he certainly he lives not oh, yeah. far from me in Manhattan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in other words, to, it, it, it's, it's interesting because it, we know that they were there, we know occasionally they'll mention it, but have they ever been interviewed just about that? Mm -hmm. Might bring up a lot of details that you don't get at, at when it's a passing event in a long, long history. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, and, and again, you know, at concerts, I run into people all the time audience and, and you know having a uh, some type of connection to the audience who save tickets yes. they have stubs yeah. oh that's great <laughs> going back uh -huh. decades yeah. you know and I'm yeah. programs and you yeah. Know, yeah. yeah yeah they they have all of that type of memorabilia so again making that accessible you know as part of this archive, I think would be interesting. Now, RTI In has past interviews that we could all access. Yeah, right? well, there's, there's, you know, I, I was mentioning to Diane earlier. Um, a lot of the interviews are in real time, so mm. they weren't recorded. Oh. They were on our logger, but we digitized the logger. It started a digital, becoming a digital logger at one point. So a lot of what came before that is not available. So there's some stuff, right. but it's not as, as much as we would like to have. Now, you guys did a thing, oh God, it was 10 years ago, where you actually brought people in to tell jazz stories. I would, you asked me to come in and I did one about Joey DeFrancesco. And uh, did, have, you still have, have that? I would have to check with Tobias, Tobias. Man. Because no, I, I don't know how many people, yeah. you asked, mm -hmm. I mean, Eddie Green went and did, he mm -hmm. did a story. That would be great to collect all yeah, that. Tobias would Jazz Jones that. or something. Jazz Jones yeah. was definitely something we did. Yeah. And remember when Tobias used to record live at oh, yeah. various oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Tobias at has and yeah. Aztec yeah. Lounge. Penn's yeah. Lounge. Yeah. 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 I remember him having Stanley Clark and Fambro playing together yeah. at Penn's Landing. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, that concert. Because that was actually broadcast on WRTI. Wow. And that Tobias has all this, I you think? I believe Tobias has oh, well. that. You know who else has Gotta a go after. John Quinsevitz, or what, you know. Uh, he's got all those, too? He's got tons of, you know, placards and posters for gigs back then. Oh, I mean, at least right. he's posted them. I don't mm -hmm. know if he's in possession of them or he's just found them somewhere, but Philly stuff, you know, where it's like a concert you're talking about, you know, Miles Davis, John right. Bill, Cam Morelli, Don Byatt, five dollars, you know, I mean, for wow. you know, stuff like <laughs> that. That's <laughs> great. Wow. You know. That reminds me too, uh, Michael, when you talk about radios, that 
there's a, a whole lot of radio broadcasts from before the days when radio saved everything. So people, you're right, people forget that the invention of radio and television was just to broadcast. It wasn't to preserve that kind right. later. They said, oh, gee, maybe we should be saving this stuff. Right. But it's fans. So, for example, in New York, for years, there was a guy named Boris Rose who famously recorded all the radio broadcasts of Bird. At a, he had a a reel-to-reel -reel recorder when they were first invented, you know, late 40s. Uh, maybe there's some cats like, you would know, I guess, but maybe there's yeah, some well, cats like We can put like the word out. out. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what we, we put hope. The word out. And, yeah. Yeah. Tom. and they record interviews, too, mm -hmm. a lot of these people. Yeah, but, you know, I know yeah. folks that, uh, <clears throat> Up in New York, that you know, our, our Pocono Mountains transmitter bleeds to oh, New York, okay. right. and uh, I would get uh, you know emails and what have you. We listen to your show in the Bronx. We tape it, wow. and, you know, hearing stuff like there that before go. we were streaming online. Perfect. Um, so there's there's folks out there. Yeah, because I know there are people. I, when I was first into jazz, I was taping cassette tapes mm -hmm. of programs on WRTI. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So I know there's people out there that do I that. Tons of that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tons of that. I have a bunch of Harrison Ridley's shows. There you go. <laughs> but where's, sure where's all his stuff? Yeah, well, that, that's oh, that's that's cool. that's, that's, you know, it's a long story, right? Oh. right. Yeah. Sorry. It's, to it's to it's take a here. step backwards, oh. though, uh, talking about visual art, the three pieces on the wall are done by one of my mentors, John Dow. Who, John Dow, who the technique that he developed was through meeting Anthony Braxton in yeah. Italy and taking on the idea of creating scores. So these pieces are actually scores. Mm -hmm. He used to do performances, and Bobby Zanko performed with mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Jermaine as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, cool. um, once you um, put the word out there, you, uh, you'll be pleasantly surprised by what you discover. Mm -hmm. What comes to mind mm -hmm. is the mm -hmm. Percent for the Art program. In the um, criminal justice, um, the criminal justice center, the Philbert, 13th in, in Philbert, and the, at the jury room, if, if you go on um, jury duty, notice the mural. It's a 96 foot um, panoramic done by a muralist who's still alive, done 20, in 1988, so how many years ago? 30 years ago, done 40% for the art um, program. He's at he teaches at University of Pittsburgh. So on my break, I said, let me check out this mural. I nearly fell out. The mural has um, um, peps, because they did, he did oh. it in, in collaboration with Senior Center. So he went into the community, and they told their stories. And their stories are captured mm. in this mural. Peps, showboat. Um, 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 Blue Note. Where is this? It, it's in the, you, it's in the criminal justice building. That at, at, at thirteen oh one Philbert. Okay. <laughs> that that I have lots of photos of that mural now. Now it's hard to take photos because you know they take your phone. Yeah. <laughs> and so if you're a professional photographer, they may let you come in and take photos. But that mural tells the story. And then they have they have little. Um, 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 it's not just images, it just have sentences, what happened here, like the Flamingo Apartments on, on Bridge and on um, Broad and um, Gerard. They said, well, they changed the name because something happened there. In the Flamingo Apartments, <laughs> Arthur Price Ox stayed there, right. um, Dave um, um, uh, Brubeck. So if you put, if you put it, once you put it out there, Folks, you'll be surpri pleasantly surprised by what comes back. Mm -hmm. And so, speaking of putting it out there, and you mentioned social media, let's agree on a hashtag. Mm -hmm. And okay. what comes to mind is Philly Jazz Legacy. Not too, doesn't take up too many characters. Okay, right. Philly Jazz Legacy is the hashtag. Okay, I okay. think that's great. Yeah. Right. Okay, I can go now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> 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 it's funny, dovetailing on what you just said, it might be a really interesting thing to do some of this oral history mm -hmm. capturing and digitizing capturing in collaboration with the Philadelphia Corporation for Aging. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, they know it's the yeah. history resides yeah. with them. Uh -huh. The mm -hmm. senior centers. Mm -hmm.